I'll recognize the gentlelady from Vermont, Ms. Ballant. Thank you, Mr. Chair. One of the things that I've noticed um, in this committee and in, in my subcommittees is that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle often overpromise and underdeliver. And we are told repeatedly that there are conspiracy theories, we have a, 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 a government that is going after uh, individual and private citizens. I mean, this is the narrative over and over and over again. And, you know, as a, as a new one to this committee, I'm, I'm always so disappointed when I feel like there's, there's actually a lot that we agree on. And press freedoms and the Press Act is something that we were able to all come together on. And that's where our, our attention should be. We should always be making sure that we have a, a free and protected press. Now what I'm hearing is, is really about employment disputes with news agencies that are now being conflated into some kind of conspiracy theory, uh, once again, of the government going after, uh, in this case, not just private individuals, but, but the press. And personal grievances, witnesses' personal grievances, um, are not actually attacks on the First Amendment and the free press. And from what I've heard from uh, this hearing so far and the materials that we were given in preparation of this, it, it seems pretty clear to the, me that most of the allegations that have been made so far involve disputes over what are essentially employment and editorial decision making by private news organizations. In the context of, of news gathering, public reporting, which we all you know, desperately need in this country, and as I said, we came together to support the Press Act. We all agree that it's an important piece of legislation to protect. I wish we spent more time in this committee really talking about important issues and not once again having the colleagues overpromise and underdeliver. If I believed every single time of the conspiracy theories that are pulled before this committee, I would have to believe that there was a boogeyman behind every corner, under every rock. It's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. And it prevents us from doing the real work that we need to do to protect a free press, which we desperately need. Now, Ms. Fareed Johnson, could you explain to us um, what is jawboning? Can you explain that to us? Yes, jawboning is the act of coercion by the government to an entity to get it to, uh, well, in, in, in the case we've seen so far, um, to get it to change its positioning, programming, what have you, in terms of what it presents to the public. Do you have concerns about congressional hearings such as this one, um, or statements that, that office holders make that could be intended to influ influence editorial decisions at news organizations? News organizations are entitled to decide for themselves what subjects to cover, and the First Amendment protects the editorial decisions they make about their news coverage. It would be unconstitutional for any government official to attempt to coerce a news organization through legal threats or exercise of the state's coercive power. And, and could jawboning be considered unconstitutional? Well, as you know, we, we filed a, an amicus brief um, in the Murthy case that is before the Supreme Court. Um, and what we talked about there is that we have said publicly, actually, that the government has an important role to play mm -hmm. as a participant in public discourse including trying to persuade, for example, social media platforms to change their policies, but not to engage in coercion to do so. There is a line there, and we believe that line, that line is critically important. And Ms. Free Johnson, what does it mean for free public discourse if public officials 
can informally intimidate or influence editorial decision making such as in a, a hearing such as this one? The critical thing is, is that it cannot be coercion. We want to ensure that the First Amendment protections that are afforded to news organizations, for example, are maintained. And so that would mean that there cannot be that that level of influence cannot go to in, in, into coercion. But again, of course, we believe the government has an important role to play in terms of public discourse. Thank you so much, Ms. Fury Johnson. I really appreciate your time. I yield back. Thank the gentlelady from Vermont. Uh, we're going to do one more round.